go for a walk? These are unprecedented times we're living in, don't you think? I mean, who would have thought that a small virus in Wuhan, China would become the creator of a global pandemic? Is it the end of times? I don't know. But if it is, are we prepared? I don't think I am. I mean, I don't think I'm ready to leave the world yet. I haven't really seen the world, you know? I want to go to different places, explore different countries. I want to go to China. Wait, I don't think I should be going there. But some people might have different opinions. Some people might be ready to leave, some people might not. Some people might even think this is Satan trying to wipe out mankind. Now I know this seems far-fetched, but hear me out. Satan has tried to wipe out mankind lots of times. It's even recorded in the Bible. In Exodus, we see that the new Pharaoh was scared that the Israelite nation was overpopulating Egypt. So what did he do? He sent soldiers to drown every Israelite baby in the river. Was that God trying to destroy the human race? No way! In Esther, we see Mordecai refusing to bow down before Haman. So does Haman just want Mordecai to only die? No, he issues a decree that all the Jews should die. Even in the New Testament, we see Herod scared that a new king will dethrone him via information he got from the three wise men. So he sends soldiers to kill every Jewish baby in order to kill Jesus. Again, these are just theories. I'm pretty sure we're all asking ourselves the same question. How are we to survive this pandemic? How are we to overcome this new obstacle that has come into our life? I mean, we were taught to turn to the Bible when we, whenever we need to overcome a new obstacle in our life. But the Bible doesn't talk about any pandemics, I think. So what do we turn to? We still turn to the Bible. I know the Bible doesn't talk about how to protect ourselves from this virus, but it does help us overcome an obstacle that we ourselves create in our lives, especially during the pandemic. That is worry. We worry about what tomorrow will be like. We worry about how many casualties have happened because of this virus. We worry about if we're going to contract the virus ourselves. But when are we going to stop worrying and start putting our faith and trust in God? Paul was a great example of this. He put his faith in God all the time. And, and he was a person who persecuted Christians and he became a, a persecuted Christian. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 31, it details the hardships Paul faced in his life. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Christ? I am talking like a madman. I am a better one, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless floggings, and often near death. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received Get a stone out of in- bozo! Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked, and beside other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father, the Lord Jesus, blessed be he forever, knows that I do not lie. All in all, Paul faced many persecutions and hardships in his life. He could have stopped his ministry after he was persecuted the first time, but he knew that his life was in God's hands, and so are ours. God loves us, God cares for us the most, and he wants the best for us. He's like the father in the parable of the prodigal son, who's ready to take us in again when we reject and rebuke him. And so, what do we have to worry about if we know that everyone's lives, including ours, is in God's hands? So we know why we should have faith in God. Now, how do we have faith in God? Having faith in God is not that easy. We have to read the Bible, pray to Him, spend some of our time with Him. And especially during this pandemic, where everyone's staying at home, it's the best and ample time for us to spend some time with God. But on your journey, to come closer to God, there is always a denial for any obstacles it can pop up right in front of you. I'm okay. Yeah. But even then, God will help us overcome these obstacles. This pandemic is not accidental. It was planned. It was planned by our own loving and sovereign God. What are you going across? No. You can go ahead. Good girl. Didn't I see him before? So if we know that this pandemic and whatever is happening in this world 
is in the hands of our own God, then what do we have to worry about? Ah, it's your books. I'll see you later, man. Oh, by the way, this pandemic might as well just be a test of our faith. So take this message on the road home, okay? Alright, see you later. See you later. Bye. Oh, wait. Where am I? Where's it? Do you know where my phone? Hold on. Come back.